Hello everyone, how are you guys doing today? My name is Aris and welcome to my channel. Today I am reacting to uh, George Carlin, uh, Death and Dying. I haven't seen that bit because this is one of his earlier uh, stand-up. So, uh, without any delays, let's get to it. Here we go. Yes, you are. You're all going to die. Didn't mean to remind you of it, but it is on your schedule. <laughs> yes, <coughs> probably won't happen when you want. Usually comes along when you're not expecting. Generally, you have your stamp collection out, you know. Now? No. <laughs> Just want a little time to put away your hinges, you know. No. There's a time to die, and it's okay, you know. It's really okay. Nobody wants to die. Nobody. Well, you know, <laughs> most people <laughs> don't want to die. Nobody wants to die. Boy, if you think being sick is no fun, <laughs> dying is really a pain in the ass. <laughs> Nobody wants to die. People don't mind being dead. Being dead is great. But getting dead. <laughs> Nobody wants to get dead. So I hope I don't die. I wonder how often we think that, you know? It's just under the surface, isn't it? You go out for the day, going out of your house. I hope I don't die. <laughs> it really spoil the circus. If I were to die. Geez, I hope I don't die. Comedians don't want to die. It's only a metaphor, but it's so true of all of us. We don't want to die out there. The comic's gonna die. I don't want to die. Jeez, I was dying out there. I was dying. It was death out there. And it was like a morgue. Oh, I don't want to die. Of course, if the comedian doesn't die, you know, if he succeeds, if he makes you laugh, then he can say, I killed him. <laughs> you did. You really? fucking did. So, it's either me or you, you know. <laughs> Just like on the freeway. Yeah, dying <coughs> shouldn't be that bad. It shouldn't be that bad. We're all going to do it. It's one of the few fair things in life. Everybody catches it once. And dying should be fun. There should be some sort of a look ahead. I mean, after all, when you die, you're going to find out where you go. Haven't we been wondering about that a long time? Where the hell we go? Isn't that the biggest thing we have to wonder about? Where the hell do you go? I don't know. Joe thinks he knows. I know Joe thinks he knows, but Joe don't know. Where do we go? Nobody knows. Well, I think sometimes you go where you think you're going to go. Whatever you think you're going to do, that's where you're probably going to go. If you keep saying you're going to go somewhere, chances are you might go there. You ever hear those guys say, oh, I'm going to hell, don't pray for me. <laughs> Don't pray for me, I'm going to hell. <laughs> he is. <laughs> you go where you want to go. I think when you die, your soul goes to a garage in Buffalo. <laughs> when Monty Hall dies, he'll go behind door number four. <laughs> That's it. Where you want to go? Yeah. No, nobody wants to die. And you know, part of the reason we don't want to die is because of that goddamn funeral. We've seen it. We know how bad news it is. That funeral is no fun. Man, if I don't like other people's funerals, I know I'm not going to like my own. <laughs> There's no way I can get behind my own funeral. Going to be lying there in a the casket? They're going to put me in the box? Going to put me in a convertible with a top down? You know that's embarrassing, lying there. And everybody's looking at you? You're dead. And they're looking. <laughs> You're just lying there still. People coming over going. <laughs> <laughs> they don't know that you're lying there with short pants on and no back in your jacket. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes they'll come over, you know, some people, it depends on your religion and so forth, but they do come right over to the casket a lot of times and they'll go like this. And they're silent for a moment. And what they're doing while they're silent is they're subtracting their age from your age. <laughs> so they get a rough estimate on what they have left. 
And they get up and they say, don't he look good? Don't he look good? You crazy? He's dead! <laughs> yeah, exactly. I know, but he never looked that good. <laughs> oh, they say the nicest things about you. They say the nicest things when you die. Your popularity goes straight up when you die. They say the greatest things there are that can be said. They'll even make stuff up if they have to. Well, he was a real asshole, but he meant well, you know? <laughs> the well-meaning asshole. Yes, you get so popular when you die. All the flowers you get. Think of the flowers you get when you die. You get more flowers when you die than you got in your whole life. All your flowers arrive at once, too late. <laughs> guys will say, oh yeah, well you know Bill is dead, yeah, poor Bill. Poor Bill is dead, yeah. Poor Dave, yeah, poor Dave is gone now. Ed, yeah, poor Ed is gone. Dan, that motherfucker is still alive, isn't he? <laughs> I wish he would die so I could like him. <laughs> Reincarnation is another aspect of death, and a lot of people will tell you little tales about it. Reincarnation, coming back. A lot of folks are sure of it. They can come back. You come back as something, I don't know. Does it seem right to you that it would work? I mean, mathematically, it doesn't seem to work. Because originally on this earth, we only had, well, let's say six people. I know we had two, but it's a controversial number. Let's say at one time there were only <laughs> there were only six of us. About six people, six souls, and those six people died, and those souls went back to the staging area, and new people were born, and those six souls came back. We still only have six souls. Now we have four billion people claiming to have souls. Where are all these extra souls coming from? <laughs> Someone is printing up souls. <laughs> <laughs> and it lowers their value. The more souls there are, the less there were. It would seem. Well, somebody's got to think of this shit, you know. <laughs> <laughs> How about the perfect murder? I've thought sometimes about the perfect murder. You know what you do? You pick up one person by the ankles and you beat another person to death with him. <laughs> And they both die, and there's no murder weapon. <laughs> what happened here, Sergeant? Looks like a pedestrian accident to me. <laughs> and they walked into well, each other. Moving at quite a clip. <laughs> of course, if you should be caught with this perfect murder, in progress or even after the fact. If you should be caught, you might wind up in death row. Death row. Wow. That's more than just fun, ain't it? I mean, this cat's there. Death row, man. <laughs> oh, well, you got that one meal, but that's not much of a consolation, is it? <laughs> you gotta get the order of a meal. <laughs> Big deal. Why don't you leave me alone? I'm not hungry, man. <laughs> they give you that one last meal. I say, you can have some fun with that last meal. I mean, if you work it right, they got to give you whatever you want. I mean, short of elephant steak, you know? <laughs> they don't want to start on a new elephant just for one guy. <laughs> but they got to give you pretty much what you want. That's part of the humanity of what they're going to do to you. Yeah, you could just order something, you know, like maybe, well, shit, you tell them you can't decide. <laughs> That's it. Can't decide. I don't know. I don't know if I want steak or lobster, you know? I, I mean, I really love them both, and I honestly can't decide. 
Could they kill you? I don't think they could kill you if you honestly couldn't decide. Lie detector, truth serum, the man honestly doesn't know what he wants. We can't very well kill him. We can't drag him down the last mile screaming, I don't know what I want. <laughs> You've got to give him a chance. And then he, well, man lives. Imagine if you worked it out and you kept it going. Six months, man's still alive, can't decide on meal. Three years, eight years, and then finally you're an honest person. So you tell them when you do figure it out. And you say, I've decided what I'd like. I think I'll have steak. Okay? How did you want that? No. <laughs> medium, medium rare. <laughs> well done. Well, my feeling is if you're gonna die, you know, or if you know, hey, die big. Die big. Nobody wants to just pass away. You don't want to be a euphemism, do you? Nobody wants to pass. You know, Arnie passed away. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, I didn't know that. Well, that's the idea. <laughs> On the other hand, Dave died. <laughs> oh, yes, I heard about Dave dying. That's true. I say die big. Give it a shot, man. Go out big. It's your chance. Die big. Work in a few posthumous reflexes for your friends. <laughs> Give them a show before you go. Entertain and uplift and instruct those you are leaving behind. When you die, give them a few posthumous reflexes. You know, the body does store electricity up. There's a certain storage of electricity, and even a dead body, a corpse, will occasionally go... <laughs> That's true. Tricky. And I say, if you have that potential after you're dead, use it properly. Pre-program. Before you die, pre-program <laughs> some posthumous reflexes that will be entertaining to those you've left behind. <laughs> Do something to capture their imagination. Roll over on the autopsy table. <laughs> oh. That's nice. <laughs> Cross your legs, scratch your balls, do something. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. I'm loving this. Now, the only reason that I even suggest that you have a choice about what you can do at the moment of death is a very little known and very little understood part of the death process called the two-minute warning. <laughs> Many people are not aware of it at all. The two-minute warning, just as in football, Two minutes before you die, you receive an audible warning. Two minutes, get your shit together. <laughs> <laughs> the reason we don't know about it is because the only people who hear it die. <laughs> and I don't think we'd believe someone anyway if he told us he received his two-minute warning, would you? Some asshole on the bus? Hey, I just got my two-minute warning. <laughs> You'd think it was a coach out on the town. <laughs> but no, the two-minute warning does arrive. And I say, use that time to entertain, to leave something behind. Do something with the two minutes. Hey, if nothing else, give a speech. A little two-minute speech. We can all give a little two-minute speech. Just pick some subject you're very fond of and talk about it for two minutes. I mean, tell them it's your last chance to tell them anything. So tell them, got two minutes, and I mean, wax eloquent, rise, bring it to the rafters, and then at the moment at the end, you say, if this is not the truth, may God strike me dead. <laughs> <laughs> what an ending. So, that was George Carlin, Death and Dying. What an amazing performance. He killed it. He absolutely killed it in that one. I haven't seen that uh, uh, stand-up before, as I mentioned. I haven't seen any of that his old stuff. But I am so looking forward to doing more stuff. More of his old stuff. The whole concept of death and dying is just brilliant. It is so fucking brilliant. It's mind-bending. It's eloquent. It is spectacular spectacularly detailed and told in a way that is so funny and yet 
it intrigues you the concept of people actually i am absolutely certain almost everybody uh think that they don't want to die but the fact is when you're dead you're dead that's it you get to find the answer that you your whole life's been looking for do i go to hell do i go to heaven do i get reincarnated is there nothing that all of these questions all of these uh told you when i you get to find out well you either find out or you don't find out but still this whole concept was so brilliant i really really did enjoy that i thought this was brilliant man i am amazed as how much i enjoyed that man it was so good i am definitely going to do most of his um uh, old stuff so keep an eye on that meanwhile if you enjoyed this like subscribe share and leave a comment i'll see you guys next time